What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 29 and we start today's episode off with a game against Nice here in League 1. As you can see there are just 7 games to go in the season and we are 5 points behind the league leaders Monaco and 2 points behind Stade Rene who are in 2nd place. If you missed the last episode you should really go back and watch it. We had the 2 biggest games of the season. First against Paris Saint-Germain and then a game against Monaco as well. Very, very, very mixed episode for feelings in that game. Of course, winning the first game against PSG was fantastic by a goal to nil, but then losing that game to Monaco. Now knowing we are five points behind them as they are top of the table with seven games to go, it is going to be very difficult for us to get back in this title race. But it is still possible though. We need to make sure we don't slip up anymore though and get a win in this game to start the episode off against Nice. We did start off really brightly in this game as well, testing the goalkeeper quite early on and then Dembele. He's just not working for us this season as he hits the post and eventually Nice got the ball away. I think I just might have gone out for a goal kick. But either way, it was still nil-nil. But half times you can see it was pretty balanced in the stats. I thought we had played a little bit better, but it was still nil-nil. So in the second half, we had to get a winning goal from somewhere as it was still deadlocked and still goalless. And as Dembele picks the ball up here down the uh, right-hand side, takes it around his man and picks out his Sacco here. The right midfielder fakes shots around his man, whips in a fantastic cross to the centre. And when we need a goal, when we need someone to step up, who do you think it's going to be? Of course, it is Thierry. Thierry Ambrose with the goal on the 69th minute mark. And as this game was coming towards this latter stage, I was thinking, oh no, please don't tell me going to slip up here at home. That will surely be us out of the title race with a few games to go. But what a ball by Sissako, who's been one of the more underrated players in this very good Paris FC season. Been very good for us this year. Whips in a fantastic cross and Thierry Ambrose with goal number 23 makes it Paris FC 1, Nice 0. So lead this game through uh, Thierry Ambrose. But sadly for us, a few minutes later, we would surrender our lead as Nice would get themselves back on level terms. And Ampilis Mendy, the holder midfielder and the skipper for Nice, was playing really well in this game. And the assist here was fantastic. The ball comes through to him and he sees Barmy comes out and that is an absolutely inch-perfect first-time cross. The awareness of the goalkeeper was coming out there was fantastic. Great assist and it is Paris FC 1, Nice 1. And as the game was coming to its close, we were still level in this game. Well, a few minutes ago, it was still 1-1. I was worried. I was thinking, are we going to get ourselves a winning goal from somewhere? We really do need one. And with four minutes to go, well, it's not Thierry Ambrose, but I'm telling you right now, this guy is just as important as him as we come to the close of the season. Bongongui, the beard, comes off the bench. And with three minutes to go, the beard makes it Paris FC 2, Nice 1, and scores us at a winning goal. I brought him on for Dembele. He's just not performing this season. I want him to, but he's not working for us. But Bongongui has got seven goals in the league. A few of those coming from the bench as well. And the beard ensures, with just a few minutes to go, we won't be slipping up. We'll be claiming a massive, massive three points. So we get back to winning ways. The beard delivering the three points with a few minutes to go. And I am so relieved about that because, you know, coming to the game, I was thinking we've got to get back to winning ways in this one. We've got to get ourselves to win. And I was playing all right, but I just hadn't really had the killer instincts in front of goal. Then when Ambrose put us one up, I was thinking, right, that's got to be it now. Stay tight at the back. And then to concede a few minutes later, and then to see Bongongui come off the bench and rescue us really was such a relieving moment, because after the game as well, I would have seen, and you would have seen just then, Monaco got beat by our rivals PSG. So once we thank our rivals PSG for once we thank them, and say well done, because they've beaten Monaco, and that gets us back in the title race as well. And had we not won that game, it would have been such a massive slip-up. But uh, still, following that, we uh, promote two players to our first team from the Youth Academy. Uh, this uh, what seems like a utility player there, 50 overall. Don't think he'll succeed in this side. Right back, centre back and left back listed. Uh, utility players are always good in FIFA. I like those, but uh, I can't see him succeeding with such a low overall. And also this guy as well, Pape Dussot. Really sad about this, but 57 overall. His potential when we promoted him was 79 to 85. He might succeed, but, you know, I don't think he's going to do so. I always say that when a youth player comes in, unless you want to give him a lot of training and a lot of uh, first-team football as well, if he's in the 50s, he's got a long way to grow and a long way to get into your first team. So I'm not really sure he will succeed, but the saddest part about it is he's got five-star skills. He's got five-star skills. He's our first five-star skiller. And, I, you know, I, I'd love to use him and I, I'd love to um, to see him succeed here. But let's be honest, Boga is our star attacking midfielder right now. He's probably been our third best player of the season 
behind Ambrose and Barmy. And, you know, I just, I, I just I can't see him succeeding in his team whilst Boga's playing so well and his overall is so low to begin with. I've said before, when a player comes out of the academy with an overall that's that low, unless you do want to train him and give him some first-team football and a lot of it as well, it's going to be hard for him to succeed. So I'm not too sure. We'll have to wait and see. We'll keep a close eye on him. We'll have to wait and see what he does. And his potential as well, 79.85, isn't exactly the best. So he, he could succeed. We're going to hope he does anyway, having those five-star skills. I'd love to use him and everything, but uh, either way, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, I'm pretty sure he'll be one of those players who might get some game time here and there. But uh, at the very, very, very best, he'll just become a squad slash reserve player for the future with Paris FC. But uh, still, we're taking Lorient here for the second of four games in today's episode. And on the back of that win against Nice, closing the gap at the top of the table, we were going to be feeling very, very confident indeed. But sadly for us, we'd fall behind in this game. Macanjo opening the scoring for Lorient. But two minutes after the restart, though, we will get ourselves back on level terms. And of course, do you saw the, uh, the five star skiller coming out of the academy? I talked about him a minute ago there. I said it's going to be hard for him to take out Boga, and this is exactly why. Boga scores once again this season. He's having his best season in terms of goals. It's only the second one in the series, but either way, his best season in terms of goals. It's a terrible pass for the Lorient defender. Comes straight to Thierry Ambrose, who assists Boga, usually the other way around, and Boga rifles the ball in for his sixth goal in the league and season. It puts us back on level terms four minutes after the restart. So Lorient won, Paris FC won. Boga with the equalising goal. Later on in the game, Lorient almost got their second goal in the game and put themselves back in front, but Bayern made a really good save there and kept it at 1-1. And it was also how the game would finish as well. Final score away from home, Lorient 1, Paris FC 1. So unfortunately for us, we do return from that win with not another one. We don't follow it up with another win, I should say. Once again, that's been a problem for us in the second half of the season, really. Once again, failing to extend the win streak or get any kind of win streak going. That's just been our biggest problem this second half of the season. You know, In the first half of the season, the reason why we were top of the table at Christmas and after the uh, the 19 games have been played half of through the season the reason was because we put together so many good winning runs and undefeated runs but in this second half of the season we slipped up quite a few times in terms of defeats and we just haven't ever had a consistent pattern of winning streaks I think our biggest win streak in the second half of the season is two or three games which is nothing really that's not a streak so it's obvious what the problem is in the second half of the season we haven't had a consistent run of wins which you really need to have if you want to win the title so coming to this game here against GSC Ajaccio rock bottom of the table if we didn't win this game I would be absolutely furious because we dropped down to fourth place now outside of the Champions League place of the top three uh, qualified with the Champions League yes of course we're still only four points behind the league leaders but we still need to return to winning ways and nothing else would be acceptable so just two and a half minutes in what a fantastic start Jeremy Boga with a goal Thierry Ambrose with the assist and Boga thanks his teammate by giving him a piggyback ride Boga's second in two games a really crisp finish there Ambrose with the assist and we take the lead early on and just a few minutes later had a great chance to double our lead Ambrose got the assist for the first goal and scored the second one as well Tiam plays him through he takes it around the last defender and slots it into the bottom corner GFC Ajaccio showing why they rock bottom and going down with some terrible schoolboy defending really for both goals as Ambrose slots the ball in and does make it Paris SC2 GFC Ajaccio nil so we had to return to winning ways in this game nothing else would be acceptable and you know I'm sorry but I know we started off the season I wasn't really sure where we were going to finish this season but after being top at Christmas top after 19 games the halfway stage to have fallen to fourth place and now occupy Europa League place it's just quite frankly unacceptable really I want to make sure we finish in at least a Champions League place at least in third place so coming to this game we had to respond get back to winning ways and that's exactly what we would do so because in the 72nd minute Thierry Ambrose makes it free and gets his second goal in the game and he's 25th in the league and so far this season he's not going to hit 37 we know that but will he at 30 that will still be pretty impressive. But uh, still, uh, that was how the game would finish. Uh, final score, Paris FC 3, GFC Ajaccio 0. They're rock bottom, they're going down. We were, of course, going to win that game. But uh, to win it convincingly by three goals to nil was good to see. It's our first proper convincing win in a while as well. So we really did need that for confidence, if nothing else. But uh, still, as you can see, we have now guaranteed a place in Europa League for next season. That's good, if nothing else, to know if, you know, we, we've, we've got that pressure sort of uh, relief from us now. No, and if nothing else, we'll be in Europe next season. But I want it to be the Champions League, not the Europa League. So it's good, don't get me wrong. And I mean, you know, come to start of the season, I definitely would have taken that. But now there's only a few games to go. I want to ensure that we get to the Champions 
Champions League, if not the title, the Europa League is not going to cut it for me. But uh, still, taking on to lose here for the fourth and final game. This is the Coupe Nationale semi-final. Don't forget we are still going for the Coupe Nationale as well as the Ligue 1 title as things stand as we close out the season. But sadly for us, coming to this game, we have to make some changes due to fitness reasons and just 18 minutes in, Toulouse would open the scoring. Miguel's played the last two games in goal, but I thought I can't risk it in this game. I need my star U team goalkeeper. Barmy back in goal. Well, Barmy staying in goal, if you will, after league fixtures. He is our best player in the team, but there was absolutely nothing that Barmy could have done about that. Put Barmy and Miguel in goal, if you want, for that shot. Neither of them is getting anywhere near it. What a strike by Ninkov, and unfortunately, Toulouse opened the scoring. So 1 0 to the home side. We had a good chance to respond there. Nicholas's header went wide in the post, and then this header was well stayed by the goalkeeper in term high for a corner. And we were playing quite well in this game as well, despite losing the game at half time by a goal to nil. We were playing quite well. I thought we were unlucky to be trailing, to be honest. But in the second half, here to lose a good chance to make it 2 0. Barmy making a good save, though, and turning his shot behind for a corner, as it was still 1 0. And one of our final chances here to equalise and send the game to extra time fell in the 80th minute as Stockrier gets on the ball. He goes for a goal. It's a good save with a goalkeeper, though, and he turns behind for a corner. And it was how the game would finish as well. Final score to lose 1. Uh, Paris FC 0. So sadly for us, we are out of the Coupe Nationale in the semi final stages. Two seasons running that tackle, and it's heartbreak in the semi final stages. But to be honest, I don't don't really mind that much. It may be a Coupe Nationale semi-final heartbreak, but I don't mind that much because for us, we're still more in fo uh, more focused on the league. Yes, hard done by in this game. Played quite well. Felt we deserved to win it, to be honest. Thought we played really well in this one, but we didn't win it. That's just how it is. We're out of the Coupe Nationale semi-finals. Fair enough. I don't care about the cup, at least not for the time being. We'll worry about that in seasons to come. Right now, it's all about the league and with four games to go, four teams can still win the title and also fall out of the Champions League places. It really is going to be a frantic finish to the season. Can we pull off the impossible and win the league title? We'll have to watch the final two episodes of the season to find out. But that does it in the episode though guys, so thank you very much for watching the video. If you enjoyed today's episode of Club and Coaching, please leave a like. Don't miss the final two episodes in the season and I'll see you for those episodes very soon.